come out of the darkness of doubt. We come seeking the light. Come, your hearts, to receive God's healing love. Or Lord, open your heart. us to see you and to feel your loving presence. Amen. And let us join our voices together in our morning prayer, opening prayer. Gracious God, you have given yourself to us in the person of Jesus. We have his example of loving ministry as a guide for our lives. We stand and reconcile to you. Be with us this day. Remind us that you are always here. God our lives, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And our opening hymn is Spirit of Faith Come Down. You're using your hymnal, it's number 332. joys and concerns for the morning. You haven't had quite as much time today to think about it. Yes, ma'am? All right, we have a praise. That's a good start.
In other words, our joy this morning is that our assistant audiovisual person is kind of running things, and Richard is trying to help her from Talladega, is that correct? And she has another helpmate here if she needs it. So uh, we thank you, uh, Kim, this morning for flying solo, kind of. <laughs> Anyone else? Joyce, there's got to be some. I, I have a joy. Yes. That's that Reagan, my oldest grandchild, was 14 yesterday. Yes. <laughs> Happy birthday, Reagan. Are y'all game for a happy birthday? Let's try it. said we would introduce our speaker in a few minutes, but I'm going to go in and do it right now. Our um, lovely and uh, loving and family grandmother, great-grandmother, <laughs> the Reverend Elizabeth, as we know her, Libby Wright, is speaking today, and we get glad to have her grandson and granddaughter-in-law and three great-grandchildren. Oh, well, she comes most of the time with Libby. These we see on special occasions usually, but it's always a special occasion when you're here with us, so welcome. Any other joys? Yes. The part-time elevator crew has the elevator working. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, because I thought I was stuck in it. I got up and I waited for the door and it didn't do anything. So I punched the open door and it didn't do anything. So I kind of did this and it decided to open enough for me to hurry up and get out. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, Trinity is very blessed with a lot of talent in, in various and sundry ways. And many people wear many hats, so we are, we are blessed here. Um, are there other joys? How about concerns? I, I, we have a family friend whose name is Sean um, Collier. We have a family friend, his name is Sean Collier. His mother was actually um, the daughter of our next door neighbors. And he is, they're not sure what's going on with him, but he has Guillain-Barre syndromes. He's 19, he's in college uh, and away from home in a hospital in uh, Texas. And he's been there for all this week and they still don't have any diagnosis. Um, so they're running tests? They're running tests. They, they don't know what's going on. He can't, he's unable to walk at this point, but it's not been a stroke. So 19 year old young man needs our prayers. His name is Sean. Okay, I have Sean Collier. And his mother, it was our neighbor, Kate, Tracy Cuddy. Okay, I have Sean down, anyone else? Travel mercies for family and friends that are flying in and flying out. Um, we got family flying in from Hawaii, son flying out to Florida, and he met up with somebody at the airport, and <laughs> some of his friends are flying out. So just, and his in-laws are driving down to Florida. So just lots of travel mercies. There's something special for your family. Um, my daughter-in-law is in a wedding in Florida. Okay, so we have people on land and in the air, anybody on the sea that we know of cruising? Well, Others? That reminds me, our family will be in Tennessee next weekend for our grandson's wedding. Madison and Brittany. That will be in Tennessee next week. Oh, I'm going to be in Tennessee too. Hey, Maybe for the wedding see. of my granddaughter, Rachel, and her young son. Now, what part of Tennessee would you be in? Well, it's near Jonesboro. 
Now, are you performing this wedding too? Yes. I kind of figured that. <laughs> Anyone else? And with that, uh, we still have the Ukraine, we still have the Palestinian situation, which is under heavy oppression and awful atrocities going on, and this is their 75th year of enduring this. So uh, we need to remember that there are other countries, yes, it's not good here right now, but it's worse in a lot of other places. So. Uh, we need to just drop to our knees and stay there, I think, for a bit. If there are any others, let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, our gracious and loving Father, we know it brings tears to your eyes to look down upon the earth and see the chaos and the hurt, the pain, the hatred, all that is evil going on in your world, brother against brother, sister against sister, parents against children and children against parents. Father, we call on you to pour out your Holy Spirit that we may shine a light into the darkness that we are experiencing. For you are our creator. You are the lover of our souls. And you have provided the salvation for our lives. We lift up to you those who are traveling this week, Pastor Nancy and Richard traveling on land, and family and friends who are traveling in the air, those who will be traveling in the near future for special family events. We lift them up for your protection, for their safety, and for their enjoyment being with family and friends. We ask your blessings on those being married and on Mary Dame and Libby, their families as they travel to weddings. We ask your blessings on Carrie and Susan Beers and Ruth Ann, who have been working hard to recover. And for Ruth Ann, we said, we just say, embrace her with your love and your peace and strengthen and embrace the family as they minister to her and love her. We lift our concerns for Sean Collier, a young man who is away from home with some serious physical problems. And we pray that test will reveal something that can be treated. Be with him 
in Texas be with his family as they wait for good news. There are many areas in our world, Lord, that are troubled. In the Sudan, we lift up that current situation that has arisen in the last few days. And we lift Angelo as he travels to the school to which he is attached there in the Sudan. Give him safe travels, bring him safely home, and may, be, may he be a light amongst the people there. We lift the people in Palestine and the Ukraine who desperately want freedom and peace and the right to live their lives as your children. Lord, we lift up the first responders here, the police, the firefighters, the medical staff, all those who are in attention to our needs. Sometimes they are serious needs and we need help as quickly as we can and as wisely as they help can discern. And that wisdom comes from you, Lord. So guide these people as they serve their brothers and sisters in our community. And now we just thank you for the joys of family being here today, of the opportunity to worship, for there are those countries where worshiping in a Christian church could mean your life. Thank you, Lord, that we have the freedom to come and worship. Maintain that freedom here, Lord, because it is being threatened. Let us lift our hearts to you. Let us lift our eyes to you. Keep our hearts and minds focused on you and on your word, that we may walk the way that Jesus taught us to walk. And it is in his name that we continue in prayer with the prayer that he taught us to pray. Let us join together our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us stand for the affirmation of faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now while you're standing, let us join together. My faith looks up to thee. 452 if you're using the hymnal.
You may be seated. Let us join our hearts together in the prayer for illumination. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voices but your own, so that we may hear your word and also do it through Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading of our lesson from the Old Testament this morning is going to be uh, led by Rick. Rick, thank you, Rick. Our Old Testament lesson comes from Job chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. And now our dear Libby is going to take over. As Beverly is going down the steps and coming out with you folks, I do want to thank Beverly for all her help and for the wonderful support this morning uh, between Kim and our beautiful, beautiful musician. Thank you. And I think uh, Harvey's around someplace. Harvey got the elevator working? Okay. Anybody afraid of enclosed spaces? Maybe you'll walk down the steps. Uh, it's always good to be back at Trinity. Some of you remember that this was where I received my call to ministry. So I really feel that this is my home, my spiritual home. Many years ago, we ministered together, and what a glorious time it was. And I know that the hearts and the beautiful smiling faces today are continuing that beautiful ministry. And so again, it's good to be here, always. Did I hear a, anybody hear a voice? Okay, oh, okay, I thought maybe, Thought maybe it was uh, the voice. <laughs> All righty. Rick, I thank you so much for reading that beautiful scripture from Job. And now I will read from Hebrews. And it does not say the 11th chapter, but if you want to go back and, and read all this together uh, when you go home, together with your family or alone, it's Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm not going to read the entire chapter, but I'm going to read selected verses. <clears throat> now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. To that, what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended a righteous man. By faith, Enoch was taken from life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father 
because he considered him faithful. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All of these people were still living by faith when they died. May God add our understanding to our hearing of this holy word. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. <clears throat> our granddaughter, Betsy, was two years old. It was bedtime. I had just given her a bath and dressed her in her little footed pajamas. It was now time to go downstairs and say goodnight to all the family. It was dark at the top of the steps. I reached out my hand to her. Me help, she said, which translated meant I want to do it myself. The steps were dimly lighted from the glow of the lamp downstairs. In the semi-darkness, I could see her take a little step toward the top step. She paused a moment, then faltered. The next moment, she stepped back and reached up to me. Nanny, help, she said, and she reached up and took Nanny's hand. I've thought about that many times since that day. Betsy's all grown up now with two children of her own. But then, Little Miss Independence, a typical two-year-old, do it myself. Then faltering, then reaching out. How very much that is like God and us. We want to do it ourselves. We feel we don't need anybody's help, especially God's help. Me help, we say. I want to do it myself. I don't need any help. We live life then not so merrily on our own and end up frustrated, depressed, angry, frustrated, we fret and stew within ourselves, depression, we down in the dumps and the pits, the awful abyss and we can't get out, anger, we blow up at others or seethe with anger until we lash out to them, they're wrong, not me, that's how we live. We don't want or ask for God's help. There. Yet if we reach out and we find out that God is reaching out to us and God is ready and willing to take our hand to help us, to undergird us, to uphold us, all we have to do is reach out. The creator of life holds all of life in God's hands. The scripture lesson, which we heard this morning, read by Vic, and I thank you. Job, in all his anguish, in all his sorrow, in all his pain, Job affirmed God's love and power. God girds me with strength. God's right hand upholds me. In his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all humankind. Words of the well-known folk hymn come to our mind. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. So faith is not a matter of doctrine. 
Faith is not a matter of creed. Faith is a matter of reaching out and putting ourselves in God's hands and walking down the steps. The beloved 23rd Psalm, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. It doesn't mean that you're not afraid. You're afraid of evil, but you're not afraid to step out. It doesn't mean that you might not falter, you might not stumble. It does mean that you believe in your relationship with God in Christ. It does mean that you wholeheartedly believe that the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, knows you better than you know yourself. It does mean that you believe with all your heart that this great God in Christ loves you better than you love yourself. And that this God wants the very best for you, for you, and for each one of God's children. When you believe that, when you know that, then you have the blessed assurance you are living by faith. You are living in a faith relationship with God, our creator, sustainer, even our God in Jesus Christ. We read in the scriptures, underneath are the everlasting arms. Paul said, nothing, nothing shall separate us from God. To know God, however, to really know God is to experience God. It's more than a once a week Sunday kind of thing. Saying that, gang, wherever you are next Sunday, remember this. That faith is more than a Sunday kind of thing. And it's more than a matter of saying God's name, even piously, God. Or you've heard some. Jesus! Well, is that really talking about a relationship? Might sound pious to some. In educational psychology, there is what is called a pyramid of knowledge, and it describes how we learn. You can learn by hearing about something. Someone can tell you something, you learn it. Or you can learn by reading about it, and this is the academic approach. Oh, three, number three, you can learn by a dramatization, um, you know, a movie or a video. But the fourth way is the best way to learn something, and that is to experience it. That's why we take field trips as part of education. You learn best by experiencing what it is that you want to learn about. There's an old saying, you've heard it, and so have I, experience is the best teacher. Now let's apply that for our relationship with God. You can hear good sermons. Heaven knows there are great preachers. You can hear wonderful Sunday school lessons, and heaven knows there are great Sunday school teachers. You can read the Bible in a multitude of translations, you can read religious books from the bestseller list. You can see some of the old classical movies. You remember the Ten Commandments? Are they still showing that on Netflix or something? Ten Commandments. Or you can see the extravaganza musical, Jesus Christ Superstar. And then there's another old, Mel Gibson, Passion of Christ. That was a few years ago. Well, you can do all that, but until you experience God in Jesus Christ, First hand, you cannot possibly know the Lord and trust God fully. You could be introduced to God, be sure, by hearing, reading, or seeing a movie. But this is just the beginning. To know God is to have a living relationship. To know God is more than having information about God. It is experiencing 
experiencing God in Christ. So, how do we go about this? Experiencing God in Christ. That night that Betsy and I came down the steps together, that was not our first experience with one another. I was with her mother in the labor room when her head crowned at birth. I was there when she ate her first solid food, and she was allergic to that, as I recall. It was scrambled eggs. <laughs> I was in the doctor's office when she had her first shot. I knew her when she didn't know me. She didn't know me as a faithful entity. She didn't know me as one who could be trusted. But my love engulfed her. My arms surrounded her, even as did my depth of concern and care for her. So it is in our journey with God. God is already there. We may be babes in the faith, but God already loves us even before we are aware of that love. God loves us even before we are aware of God. That's the theological term of first-year seminary students love it, prevenient grace. That's what prevenient grace is all about. Grace already searching for us. Grace already reaching out to us. And finally, miracle of miracles, we realize that if we reach out in the dark, God is there with us. As surely as God's presence has been always with us. What a powerful, enlightening, heartwarming moment that can be when that realization comes over you. Sort of a cycle. We trust in the faith relationship, and through that trusting experience, we come to have more faith in the person. And as we have more faith, then we trust them more. Let me illustrate it this way. You parents know this well. You parents who have been parents long ago, remember those times. Children coming in at a certain hour. A parent has faith in their child, but they're not sure just how much they can trust them. Let's say they can trust them. You, the parent, set a time for him or her to come in. You watch the clock waiting for the appointed hour. You remember? Do you know? You wait, then you wait, then you wait, and wonder of wonders, they arrive on time. Hallelujah. The child is dependable. So after a few positive experiences, children, remember this, after a few positive experiences, you make the hour a little later. You trust in that faith relation more and more. So it is with God. We dare to trust God. And in that trusting faith relationship, we discern that God is indeed faithful and just. And so we respond in greater faith. I know that sometimes there are dark nights of the soul when you and I, as Jesus our Savior, cried out, My God! My God, why have you forsaken me? Have you felt that way? Yet, there still perhaps has been something deep within you, deep within me, that knows God's ever-living, ever-loving faithfulness. Trust and obey, sings the old hymn. Trust and obey. There's no other way. Trust and obey. Considering the saints of old, they could not see God any more than we can, but they could 
and they did experience God through the main events in their lives. The 11th chapter of Hebrew, from which I read just a few moments ago, speaks to this. Abraham went out in faith, not knowing where he went, but he knew whom he trusted. Sarah conceived in faith, thinking this was foolish, to even consider that an old man and an old woman could have a baby. It seemed ridiculous, but they had faith. Moses was hid in the bulrushes by faith, and by faith he chose to go with his people. The Hebrew people, by faith, crossed the Red Sea. By faith, Noah built the ark. By faith, Rahab the harlot welcomed the spies and did not perish. And after all the tragedies in Job's life, he kept his faith and affirmed God. Oh, Job, it's become a saying, the tragedies of Job, we talk about it sometimes. He experienced economic tragedies. His herds and flocks were killed or stolen. He experienced family tragedies. All his children were killed in a disaster. He experienced illness with constant pain and misery, yet he kept his faith and affirmed his trust in God. In his hands is the life of every living thing and the breath of all humankind. Job's word. In his hands, in God's hand, is the life of every living thing and the breath of all humankind. The saints of old took their steps, trusting God, and even greater faith evolved as they experienced God's caring, providential love. They launched out. They accepted the promise of God's love and fully experienced God to be trustworthy, worthy of trust. So they trusted God more, and their faith increased. <laughs> Again, hallelujah! Could it be that in your life's journey, you have never fully experienced God's overwhelming love because you never completely put your hand in the hand of God? Is it fear that has kept you from trusting God? Fear of the unknown? Fear of the future? Fear of losing control to God? Fear is what keeps us from trusting God. Fear, believe it or not, is the opposite of faith. You think the opposite of faith is doubt. No. It is fear. You can't fully trust as long as fear controls you. Fear not, said the angel to Mary, and she submitted her life to God. Fear not, said the angels to the shepherds in the field. And they, what did they do? They ran all the way to Bethlehem to meet the Son of God in a manger. Fear not, said the angel in the earthquake on resurrection morn. And the women met the risen Christ. Fear not. Put your hand in the hand of God. Trust. Trust in God's faithfulness. Has your faith relationship allowed you to trust God fully? How many times have you come to a rocky place on the road, a darkened step that caused you to falter, and you say, Lord, Lord, I trust you, but... And you cannot take that step. We think we know that God truly loves us and will help us through, but we're not quite sure. 
We want to trust God, but we can't quite fully. You can never trust God fully or experience God's overwhelming love if you never completely put your hand in the hand of God. There are certain saints of the past century who launched out in faith, trusting in God's abiding care, whatever the circumstances. Albert Schweitzer in the late 19th and early 20th century, the missionary in deepest Africa. Corrie Ten Boom, a Dutch Christian woman during World War II, who was because of that she hid Jews from the Nazis, was arrested by the Gestapo and was thrown into a concentration camp. You remember that either from hearing about it then or from the history book. Our own Virginia conference, there was a woman named Jean Craig, a missionary. She went to China and was imprisoned and tortured for many years by the Chinese communists. Finally, she was released. And we certainly remember Martin Luther King Jr., who experienced the faithfulness of God in the face of fire hoses, police dogs, Birmingham jail. You know people of great faith, I do too. A neighbor, a friend, a fellow employee at the next workstation. Perhaps, perhaps someone sitting near you in church right now. People who live their lives walking with God, trusting God, whatever the circumstances. Two scientists on an expedition in the Rocky Mountains hired a young local boy, 11 years old, to be their guide. While on their exploration trip, they discovered a fledgling eagle in a nest on a crag, a rocky ledge far below them. The mother eagle was nowhere in sight, and the men were excited with the find and wanted to examine the eaglet. Very much. They tied a strong rope to a heavy wicker basket. The basket was large enough to hold their 11-year-old guide, the little boy. The plan was to lower the basket, lower the basket while the little boy was in it, have the boy place the young eaglet in the basket with him. Then the two scientists holding the rope would hoist the basket, boy, bird, and all, back up to the cliff. When the boy looked down the steep, rocky precipice, he refused to get into the basket. You can understand that. Even when the scientists offered him a week's pay of their own money for this one day, the boy still refused. Finally, in desperation, one of the scientists asked him, do you have a suggestion as how we might get this bird? The mountain boy replied, sure, I'll go down there for nothing if you get my paw to hold the rope. Because the young boy had a faith relationship with his father, he had faith in his father. He knew he could trust him. Come back with me once more with Betsy to the top of the darkened staircase. Jesus said, except you become as a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. The faith and trust of a little child. A child who reaches out to one who is loving and trustworthy. That is faith. The faith for our journey of life and life 
eternal. Job said, In God's hand is the life and breath of everything, of everything, every living thing. A poet has written, I said to the man at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied to me, Put your hand into the hand of God, and that shall be better to you than a light, and safer than a known way. Pray with me. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I proved you o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust you more. Dare to put your hand in the hand The hymn of dedication, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Together we have met. Together we have sung praises. Together we have worshipped the Almighty God. Now we go out into the world, assured of God's faithfulness to you and to me. God is able to be trusted. Go out with that knowledge. We will put our hands in the hands of one another as we go out, either waving or hugging or reaching out with our hands. Go out now with the knowledge that we have met together with our brothers and sisters. We have met knowing that God is truly faithful to us. Put your hand in the hand of the one who stills the waters. Now we go in peace. We go in peace to our everyday lives, trusting, trusting that God is reaching out to us to hold our hand in the everyday events of our everyday lives. We go now in peace and in love. God bless us.